Good morning and welcome to All Souls Church in Miami Beach. Today we celebrate the second Sunday after Pentecost, a story about trial and tribulation. Um, the first thing I would like to say is a disclaimer, is that ordinarily I wear a mask every day when I leave the rectory. However, I am alone here in the church, and so that is why I do not, I am not wearing a mask this morning. Also, if you wish to follow along this morning, you may go to www.bcp, which stands for Book of Common Prayer, bcponline.org, go to the Daily Office tab, and then to Morning Prayer Right 2. And that will correspond, of course, if you have a Book of Common Prayer at home, you can just follow along with your own prayer book. Um, and I will be giving the page numbers as we go along. Once again, Thank you for being here. Grace, and, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Come, let us adore him. And now we continue on page 82. Let us pray the Jubilate together. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness, and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Give, go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his faithfulness endures from age to age. I now ask you to join me in the appointed psalm for today, which is Psalm 100. It may be found on page 729 in the prayer book. Once again, the appointed psalm is Psalm 100 on page 729 in the prayer book. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness, and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving, go into his courts with praise, give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from age to age. Our first reading this morning is a reading from the book of, of Exodus. When the people of Israel had journeyed from Rephidim, entered the wilderness of Sinai, and camped in the wilderness, Israel camped there in front of the mount. Then Moses went up to God. The Lord called him from the mountain, saying, Thus you shall say to the house of Jacob, and tell the Israelites, You have seen what I did to the Egyptians, and how I bore you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. Now, therefore, if you obey my voice and keep my covenant, you shall be my treasured possession out of all the peoples. Indeed, the whole earth is mine, but you shall be for me a priestly kingdom and a holy nation. These are the words that you shall speak to the Israelites. 
So Moses came, summoned the elders of the people, and set before them all these words that the Lord had commanded him. The people all answered as one, everything that the Lord has spoken, we will do. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now I ask you to please turn to page 86 in the prayer book. Page 86, where we will pray together Canticle number 9, the first song of Isaiah. Canticle number 9, found at the top of page 86. Surely it is God who saves me. I will trust in him and not be afraid. For the Lord is my stronghold and my sure defense, and he will be my savior. Therefore you shall draw water with rejoicing from the springs of salvation. And on that day you shall say, give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make his deeds known among the peoples. See that they remember that his name is exalted. Sing the praises of the Lord, for he has done great things, and this is known in all the world. Cry aloud, inhabitants of Zion, ring out your joy, for the great one in the midst of you is the Holy One of Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A second reading this morning is a reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand. And we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For while we were still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. Indeed, rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person someone might actually dare to die. But God proves his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. The word of the Lord. And now the gospel. The Holy Gospel of our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom, and curing every disease and every sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them, because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into the harvest. Then Jesus summoned his twelve disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits, to cast them out, and to cure every disease and every sickness. These are the names of the twelve apostles. First, Simon also known as Peter, and his brother Andrew, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector, James, son of Alphaeus, and Thaddeus, 
Simon the Cananean, and Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Go nowhere among the Gentiles, and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, proclaim the good news. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. You received without payment, give without payment. The Gospel of the Lord. Today we hear Paul's take on suffering. I quote, We also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. not even getting into justification by faith and salvation, I get a little hung up on boasting in our suffering and suffering producing endurance and character and hope. To me, it just seems a little too neat and tidy, like too quick a progression from suffering to hope and God's, pouring, God's love pouring into our hearts. Paul is telling the believers in Rome that suffering is necessary for producing hope. Boy, do we know that today. But can we have all these important spiritual disciplines and just forget about the suffering? Probably not. So how do we understand suffering? And is this linear progression normative? Suffering producing endurance? character, and ultimately hope? In modern terms, we can compare this to Elizabeth Kubler-Ross's five stages of grief. When we are faced with a loss or a death, we enter a cycle of grief. The stages Kubler-Ross outlined are denial, anger, bargaining, depression, and acceptance. The stages are cyclical, though, and not everyone goes through every stage when facing grief. You hope that someone finally reaches the place of acceptance, but unfortunately people can remain angry or depressed, bargaining or in denial for a good long time. In a similar way, Paul writes that the end of suffering is hope, and hope won't disappoint us because God's love has been poured into our hearts. But let's face it, suffering can also lead to being, becoming bitter and angry and sad, losing hope, abandoning our faith, especially if our faith is causing us to suffer in the first place. This was a harsh reality for the early Christians who dealt with persecution. It can be difficult to realize that not only does our faith not totally protect us, but God can't stop every bad thing from happening to us, no matter how faithful we are. But our faith may even get us into trouble sometimes. When people stand up for the lost and the least, because their faith compels them to take a moral stand. Well, it's not always a popular position in our current society. Suffering is one of the most difficult aspects of our lives. When you speak to folks who are not religious, one of the things that may keep them away is the existence of suffering. They say 
If God is all powerful, then God could seem like a bully who causes people to suffer and endure war and natural disasters and the like. Rabbi Harold Kushner, who wrote the classic book, When Bad Things Happen to Good People, told a story of parents who lost a daughter when she was just in college. She passed away from a blood vessel that burst in her brain. Rabbi Kushner went to the home of the parents to sit with them in their grief, not knowing what he could possibly say to ease their pain. Before he had a chance, the father blurted out, you know, Rabbi, we didn't fast last Yom Kippur. This declaring statement sent the rabbi reeling, wondering how they could believe in a God who could strike down their only daughter out of nowhere for punishment for their ritual imperfections. What kind of God do we believe in? What kind of God are the religions of the world teaching people to believe in? Today, Paul talks about not just suffering producing endurance and character and hope, Paul presents some drastically different images of God. God saving us from God's wrath through the blood of Christ and God's love being poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. And then God granting grace, even if we don't deserve that grace. Depending on our images of God, we may have hope that our faith can save us from suffering. What we all must realize, though, is that God can't prevent suffering, even if God wanted to. And I believe in my heart of hearts that God does seek to prevent our suffering. The question then becomes, how do we handle suffering? What lessons can we learn? How do we rely on God when we suffer? And somehow, somehow be at peace knowing that God can't prevent these difficult moments. For this, I turn to William Sloan Coffin. Coffin's son, Alex, died when he was only 24 in a car accident. The coffin gave the eulogy at his son's funeral. He spoke of his disappointment in some people's reactions, of a woman who dropped off Keish at his home and remarked that she just doesn't understand, she just doesn't understand the will of God. Coffin questioned that woman's theology, that it was the will of God that his son should die. He said in the eulogy, I quote, God doesn't go around this world with his fingers on triggers, his fists around knives, his hands on steering wheels. My own consolation lies in knowing that it was not the will of God that Alex died, that when the waves closed over the sinking car, God's heart was the first of all our hearts to break like God himself. Scripture is not around for anyone's protection, just for everyone's unending, wonderfully supportive support. You gave me what God gives all of us, minimum protection and maximum support. Minimum, minimum protection and maximum support. This is what God provides to all of us if we are open to accept that freely given and unmerited grace. <coughs> Excuse me. When we face suffering, 
whether our suffering will end with hope or if it is just feels like we are enduring and enduring and enduring some more. Our God is not the one with his figure on the trigger. Our God is the Good Shepherd, searching high and low for that one lost sheep. Our God is the father running down the road to meet his wayward son. Our God is the mother hen gathering her little ones together. Our God is Jesus holding us close and saying, shh, shh. everything is going to be all right. And we all say, thanks be to God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now, I would ask you to please turn to page 96. Page 96 where we pray the Apostles' Creed. Page 96. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. I ask you to please turn to page 97. And now the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Suffrages B on the next page, page 98. Suffrages B in the middle of page 98. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold us now and always. Day by day we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy on us, Lord, have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy, for we put our trust in you. For you, in you, Lord, is our hope, and we shall never hope in vain. The Colic for Proper 6 on the page, on the top of page 230. Keep, O Lord, your household, the church, in your steadfast faith and love, that through your grace we may proclaim your truth with boldness and minister your justice with compassion. For the sake of our Savior Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A colic for Sundays. 
on the bottom of page 98. O oh God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you, that the week to come may be spent in your favor. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. A Collect for Grace on the top of page 100. Lord God, almighty and everlasting Father, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power, that we may not fall into sin, nor be overcome by adversity. And in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now is time to call up intercessions and thanksgivings to your heart and share them with God. And in the middle of page 101, the general thanksgiving. Let us pray. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life. But above all, for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. On the top of page 102, a prayer of St. Chrysostom top of page 102. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised to your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Once again, thank you for being with us this morning. I wish you a wonderful and holy week. Please be safe. In the middle of page 102, let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to him from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen.